We're here at Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park because although you can't see it, under our feet is 18 kilometers of pipework carrying low carbon heat to buildings across the park and the surrounding area. The system is called a heat network and these have a huge part to play in our transition to a net zero emissions future. District heating schemes come in a variety of sizes, including large networks supplying multiple buildings and small networks contained in a single building called communal heat networks. The East London District Energy Scheme here in Stratford is an example of a district heating network. Whether they are large or small, heat networks have an energy centre or plant room where the water is heated, ready to be pumped around the network. The East London District Energy Scheme has two interconnected energy centres. The one we can see here at Kings Yard and another one in nearby Stratford. Heat networks can be low or even zero carbon because they don't need to rely on fossil fuels. For example, the Kings Yard Energy Centre heats water using large scale combined heat and power technology and a large biomass boiler. There's actually a wood chip store inside. After the water is heated, it flows in underground pipes to all the buildings in the area, like the Olympic venues, offices and homes. When the heated water arrives at each building or block, it's then directed via smaller pipes to each home. This heat energy is then used for central heating and hot water. I'm saying heat energy because the heated water that arrives here from the energy center is not the same hot water that comes out of the tap. Instead, each flat has one of these, a heat interface unit. It takes heat energy from the network and uses that energy to heat water for taps and central heating. Once the heat's been extracted from the network, the cooler water then flows back to the energy center, where it's ready to be heated up again for another loop. In many homes on heat networks, central heating comes in the form of underfloor heating instead of radiators. You can see that in the flat we're in right now, there are no radiators on the walls. This is because underfloor heating requires lower network temperatures to deliver the same warmth inside the home. Underfloor heating will become more common as standards change, enabling lower carbon sources of heat, like heat pumps, to be used in energy centres. Only a small percentage of UK buildings are currently supplied by heat networks, with most properties having an individual gas boiler. But the number of heat networks in the UK is rising. It's estimated that 18% of UK heat will need to be supplied by heat networks by 2050 if we are to cost-effectively meet our carbon targets.